Hi, my name is Shell White, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I'm Bruce. Can you say that a little slower? I'm, <laughs> I'm Dude, Chris. I'm still in a trance from the Nero de Marte stuff. Sorry. Oh, okay, yeah, you're still tripping. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, today, we, go ahead. Who do we have today? Today we've got an interesting guest, Show White. Now I had known nothing about him until uh, I spoke with his publicist, did a little research. I mean, some of this stuff is like incredibly well produced, mm-hmm. and yeah. he's worked with some really big names, as you said earlier. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he's writing with Grammy Award winners. You know, pretty crazy. So let's go ahead and get. I don't. Do we call him Show or Mister White or? Let's get him on and we'll ask him. I guess we'll have to ask him. All right, let's get him on the line and see what happens. All right. Hello. 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 Hi, Bruce. How are you? Hey, it's good. I'm Bruce. Hey, my partner Chris. I'm Chris. Chris. Uh, Chris, how are you? Good. I'm great, man. So before hey, we be- begin, yeah, go ahead. Before we start, do we call you Show? It's Show. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So I've got to ask, just because, where did you get that interesting name from? Uh, show comes from my last name, Shohaib, and then it just turned out to be Show. People would call me Show, and then I was like, yeah, well, let me put a W there. Cool. And then oh, it nice. just turned out to be Show, yeah. Oh, so nothing deep, and I thought there was like some deep meaning behind it. Well, White, the last name, actually, Show White, is more... Um, um, why I was looking for a simple, simple name, a simple last name. And I was like, well, let's just go with the color white. And then I spelled it W H I G H T because, the, um, in the English language, W I G H T means creature. So I was like white creature. Oh, so nice. Like, so there is yeah. a, I, I was wrong. There is a, uh-huh. a good meaning behind it. Sweet. So again, uh, just, we'll, just, we'll get into just, the just so you know, that's the first time Bruce has ever admitted he's wrong. <laughs> show that's because i'm usually not wrong but um i don't know if you've listened i don't know if you've listened to these podcasts show but these things go down the uh down the wrong path real quickly so hope you're uh, yeah 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 <laughs> okay <laughs> is that yeah I'm, yeah you listen or yeah yeah I'm pre- yeah you're gonna yeah I'm, pre- yeah I'm, pre- I'm prepared yeah <laughs> his publicist warned him these guys are right. crazy <laughs> well chris gets out of line i have to reel him back in quite often so yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm about to say i'm about to say a word that bruce loves are you ready gojira i'm ready gojira no 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 <laughs> are you a metal fan show i am absolutely a metal fan of course so all right remember who's got the controls to the recording of this podcast where are you on gojira on what? Sorry, on the band Gojira. No, I I'm not familiar with them though. See, Perfect. oh man, Thank you. That's oh, dude, you don't dude. even need to. That's good. When this podcast is over, <laughs> if you want to have a life changing experience, <laughs> you load up a song called Ouroboros. They're a, they're a French metal band, and it's like one of the craziest tracks you'll ever hear. In Ouroboros. my opinion, Ouroboros. Ouroboros, yeah. Yeah, or you could just make some coffee and not do that, and you know, look out the birds outside. You'd be or, or you could, or we could talk about what you're actually here to talk about, which is your right. Music. Or we could get back to Show White. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I know this guy. Yeah. <laughs> really? How is he? So, do you like him? He's all right. <laughs> so, for fans not familiar with Show White or listeners who are not quite fans yet, can you give us like a two sentence boardroom pitch? Um, I'm very. I'm very, very different when it comes to sound. I, I love to do, I love to do a lot of ballads. Yeah, that can can yeah give me give me a soft sound a little bit. But yeah, I love to do hard rock music. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I you, noticed. You, I was listening. You, I was listening to some of your songs there, and I noticed that while there is a that real ballad quality to it, um, they definitely get heavier and build. You know, especially the songs like "Down the Aisle" and "Old and Gray." Mm-hmm. Old and Gray is a little bit different too. You got some interesting beats going on. Yeah, Old and Gray was a little bit. I was um, it was really it was just starting out with the whole recording thing. It was 2015, 
Mm-hmm. And and then it went down an interesting path and everything coming out now it's all going to be it's all hard rock. It's all full of guitar solos, it's all heavy, has this um ACDC kind of sound to it, you know. Okay. Is it more up tempo? It's more up tempo, yeah. It's all it's all very hard rock, fast hard rock and I believe we have a track comes out in February. Okay. Oh, cool. So not too long from now. So are you are you taking that new model or the music industry model where you're releasing singles, or are you going to put a whole record together and do that? Actually, actually singles, yeah. Uh, really yeah, that singles. seems to be what everybody's doing lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even the biggest bands aren't releasing albums anymore. Just single here, single there, you know? I I personally like it better. I'm, 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 I kind of come from the time when the shift from album sales to streaming happened. I know Bruce comes from way before that. So Yeah, I don't like it better. You don't. No, I like the whole album experience, buying the record, sitting there, reading the liner notes and listening to it the way the artist, you know, sequenced mm-hmm. it because that was important back in the day. It it is absolutely. I mean, it it it's a form an album is an, is an art. An album is a is a story, you know, that you get to tell from start to finish and and reason a lot of up and coming artists are doing singles are they're trying to, well, how how about this song? Do you like this song? You know, and you get right. You, you might get discovered with it, and you might get discovered with another one. And then once you establish this uh, this following, then you give them like a little bit of uh, a taste of a whole story from start to finish, a hardcore sure. album. You know. Also, I think that people have very very short attention spans these days. That's very true. Everything has to be like two minutes or less, or they're moving on to the next thing. I'm sorry, what yeah. were we talking about? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of, I kind of, we talked to, um, I had this conversation before. It's funny because actually, my my latest single is is like five minutes plus long. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow! You know, but um, but yeah, but but I I believe it was just a it was a ballad that it, it needed to be that way. It needed to be a story, so. It wasn't planned. I have the new song coming out. It's two minutes and 15 seconds just because it just needed to be that way, you know? Right. When do we get to hear this new song? Um, I believe it's it's getting mixed right now, so it's almost done. And then we're going to master it with uh, Sony Studios here in L.A. Oh, wow. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's called Elf Rock. Elf? So- Elf Rock? Elf rock, yeah. Like E L F or A L F? Uh E L F, like Elf. Oh, cool. Nice. So Show White, is that I mean obviously that's you, but do you have a dedicated band or do you uh uh no I'm so I'm a solo artist, but I have the people that record with me are the same people who play live with me or or a bunch of others, you know, we're all a bunch of uh, really cool friends that work together. Yeah, especially my producer Ian Charlie, who uh, produced down the aisle, and he kind of goes about uh, getting all the musicians for the studio recording for the live um, shows and all that. Right. So that brings me to the question: Then, are you doing all the writing? I am doing all the writing, wow. all the songwriting, melodies, and lyrics. Yep. Do you have any professional training at all? Uh, really, I'm self-taught, but I studied um, opera. When I was young, so vocally, vocally, that was classically trained. Oh, when that's it comes such a to huge my singing, help. yeah, that's mm-hmm. such a huge help to have classical vocal training, in my opinion. That's very true. Yeah, interesting. How did you end up when, studying opera? How was it? How did you end up doing that as a kid? Um, so I ended up. I my parents were originally Egyptian, and I grew up in Los Angeles, and. Once they got a do, they got a divorce at a very um, when I was like around eleven. Yeah. And my mom, she was like, "Well, okay, well, are you gonna come with me there?" And once I went there, I got picked up in a in a choir in school, and I was like, "I kind of dig that. I really like that." So I just decided to go to the Cairo Opera House there, and I met the the scariest woman you can ever meet if she screamed at you. <laughs> <laughs> she, <yeah. laughs> And she will make you hit that note. Trust me. And <laughs> it was it was incredible meeting her. At the same time, it was very frightening, but uh, it helped a lot down the line. You know. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey, so, is it true that it snowed in Los Angeles? Does it snow in Los Angeles? No. Did it snow? Uh, I was seeing news reports that it snowed in LA a few weeks ago or whatever. Uh, not really. It snows up, up if you go like towards Mammoth or like Big Bear. Okay. Uh, Big Bear, Big Bear. Mostly they have like uh, a little bit of artificial snow as well. But Mammoth for sure does snow up there. It's kind of where all the LA people go snowboarding or skiing. Gotcha. Oh, I was just curious because I was seeing on the news that it snowed in LA, and I was like, "What the hell? <laughs> How does that even happen? <laughs> Why don't you stop watching um, fake news and pay attention to the podcast?" <laughs> <laughs> That would be helpful here, Chris. I was like, wait a second, was I yeah, sleeping? Or? <laughs> I thought you know he's uh he's off in left field. Somewhere. No, it, it actually did snow, but not right in L.A. My I, I I own a software company as well, and the guy that that I work with, he lives ah uh, God, he kind of closer to the mountains. He says I don't know anything about L.A., and he said that they yeah. got they got a little snow there, but not it didn't last. It was just like kind of in the air. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's meteorologist chris seegers for you yeah M- welcome to the brutally delicious melts, weather podcast yeah. <laughs> what are we going to talk about today weather <laughs> so show when people listen to your records is there something you want them to walk away from or take away from after listening to them yeah yeah absolutely i mean it's it, there's always a story behind it and and you know whenever i get um you know i a criticism that like, wow, it's a really cool song, man. Uh, don't you think it's long, whatever? And I'm always, I'm always, just, there's, there's truly a meaning behind it. And there's a guitar solo that I want you to listen to. And there's, but like down the aisle, my latest single was, it's actually a wedding song. Ironically, I'm, I never want to get married actually, or <laughs> have as yeah. Or have anything to do with that. But um, I had a friend of mine who, uh, so, I mean, would it be cool to write like a rock and roll wedding song that um, everybody would play at their wedding? You know, that might be a hit. And I was right. like, oh, you got a, you got a point there. I really like that. And then that's how we went about it, you know, but not nothing, nothing that I was like emotionally trying to get married or in love or anything. Right. Like that, you know? <laughs> You're like, I just want to make a wedding. <laughs> You know where the money is? Yeah. People getting married. Let's write a wedding rock song. Let's write right? a wedding song. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I think it worked out okay for Shania Twain, right? Like, oh, yeah. right, right. My God. Are you, are you planning on taking uh, your production out on the road? Um, not at the moment, but I'm um, thinking start live probably next summer because I'm going to be, I'm planning on releasing a new single every every seven weeks eight weeks probably okay cool cool so on your facebook page it looks like you're working with some pretty high-end talent uh grammy nominated people um are you working with them for this record as well no this record actually i'm working with um a lot of more more on hands like interesting people where uh, where i actually got to be with them in the studio so we we're working at uh, sony studios in in la in culver city yeah which is called the the bakery the bakery is uh, is where they master everything vinyl from vinyl to recordings to every everything you can think of you know and this time i got to go to the studio and see everything getting mastered and go in the vinyl room so it's just it's so much fun and you get to see all these Grammy awards on the side. And uh, yeah. so, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And then I get to mix with, um, with, uh, with this guy. He's super, super cool. He mixes for all the, um, all the movies in Hollywood and stuff like that. Yeah. And also got to play with a drummer who does stuff for, um, for movies as well uh, for Hollywood. So it's really nice. cool meeting all these like underground people who, who still yet do really professional work, you know? Yeah, no, oh, yeah. It, it's 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 um working on film is such a different way of working compared to working like for for uh like an album, you know. Yeah, totally. And, and film people tend to be quite efficient at their job. <laughs> they they are perfectionists. I yeah. Tell you that, yeah. <laughs> Which I like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. When you when you take the when you do plan the show, are you you seem very 
theatrical? Is it going to be like a theatrical sort of thing or? Um, yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, uh, and I'll tell you why I'm a huge fan of Ozzy Osbourne for, for a reason actually is, is because I love, yet yeah, he can still do that. He can still give you that ballad song like here for you or, um, or, you know, most of his stuff. And yet he can still give you another really, really heavy, heavy hard right. rock song, you know? And that, that's really why I'm, I'm a huge fan of him, you know, because, because that's, it's kind of direction where, where I want to go, you know, mm -hmm. I want, I want to be able to write a love song that's, uh, that's for everybody. And I want to be able to write a really hard rock song. That's not for everybody, you know, it's for more for heavy metal fans, you know? Right. Ozzy is one of those guys that's really crossed, you know, uh, genre, I don't know if genre is the right word, but he's crossed like, you know, like he goes from like bark at the moon and crazy train to like no more tears, which is like, no more tears. Yep. A blend yep. of whatever. And I know Bruce is a big fan of Ozzy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What's your favorite record from Ozzy? Made My, Dire of a Madman without a uh, doubt. I knew you were going to say that one. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I heard Ozzy, I was like maybe like seven or six. And I heard, um, I heard Bark at the Moon. And like, I just never heard a song like that in my life before. Right. Yeah. It blew my mind. And of course, you know then, I, then of course you find out about black Sabbath and all that stuff later, but right. You know, it's really cool. I like uh black rain. Yes. That's a album. good album too. I agree. But for mm -hmm. me, like I remember being a kid, I was in high school or something like ninth grade. And there was this little tiny independent record store across the street. And I walked across the street one day and, Freaking Die of a Madman was on the shelf on vinyl, and I had never heard of it before. And I'm like, I was just intrigued by the cover and bought it. And you know, the first few notes of Over the Mountain, shit, I was sucked right in. <laughs> Craziest thing, and yeah, <laughs> that was it. That's awesome. Been a metalhead ever since. So, so I don't know, Chris. You got anything else before I get to my favorite part? I don't know, but let's get to your favorite part. So I don't know if you've paid attention to the shows, but we have a little section where. Uh, we ask ridiculous questions. It's called the Furious Five, and we just kind of get your off-the-cuff answers. Awesome. So if you've got Excited. a sense of humor and you're ready to play. I am ready. Keep in mind, if the questions suck, Chris wrote them. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy. All he does is blame me for everything. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> it's 2020. Show Aren't we over this bad joke already? No, but show was in the middle of telling you about like how much emotion he pours into his songs. And you said, hey, does it snow in California? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it does when, uh, when there are a lot of fires. Yeah. yeah. When, when it's burning. Then, yeah, Hold yeah. on. Chris can give you the rain <laughs> forecast for the fires. Chris, what's the rain? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. You ready, show? I'm ready. Name something you might think twice about getting rid of. Ooh. Um, cutting my hair for sure. That is something I would, I would think not just okay. twice, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous Name of people with hair. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. I don't know if Chris has turned his camera off, but he's got zero hair. So <laughs> <laughs> Name a fruit that is used to describe a woman's body part. Uh, fruit? <laughs> did you say fruit? I did. Um, peach. Very good. You you took the high road again. Very nice. <laughs> You're our second interview today. Always go on the high road. Uh, name a part of their body a worker might copy on the office copy machine. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, his ass. Beautiful. All right. And let's let's go a little. Is cereal a soup? Why or why not? Oh, that is interesting. Um, no, no, no. It's not. It's not a soup. I don't uh, I think it's just. Uh, I think it looks like a soup, but it's uh, a little sweeter. You know, with <laughs> with milk to it. <laughs> Beautiful. It, it <laughs> and, looks like a soup. It acts like a soup. Like it is a soup. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> the last interview we had, they said it couldn't be a soup because it's cold. But you could get like, don't the Russians have like borscht or something like cold beet soup? 
You can have cold soup, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I don't think that's necessarily the uh, you know a temperature thing. Here's a question though: <laughs> oh, Who geez. likes soup? Do I like soup? Yeah, I like soup. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! You don't what like soup? What is wrong with you guys? Soup is the most <laughs> useless freaking meal. There is. <laughs> <laughs> it's soup. I, I believe soup was made when you're sick. You need to, you need to have soup. Or before yeah. a performance, and you want to <laughs> loosen up your vocal cords, right? Yeah, I'll stick to tea. Oh, whatever. I, but you I, could use, like, go ahead. I remember in Vancouver, right before I left, about a year before I moved to the States, um, there was this peop- these people that tried to start, like, a fast food soup chain. I'm, I'm going to give you two guesses on how it went. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> no. right, wait a second. So hold on. We're going to bring this back to Seinfeld because you always bring it back to Seinfeld. What about the soup Nazi, dude? It worked for him. It's a great episode. But... I used to go there. Did I tell you that story? <laughs> yeah. I was in the studio as an intern working for Paul Simon at the Hit Factory. And every day I used to have to go to the soup Nazi and get soup. So I was a real guy. That's a fun fact. <laughs> you go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So the last of my five questions, and it's probably real, uh, real pertinent, I guess, in the uh, current events. But what are some fun and interesting alternatives to war that countries could settle their differences with? Um. Wow, well, that's an interesting question. Um. How about paintballing? Paintball, paintball works for me. <laughs> yeah, me too. I prefer paintball Monopoly, over nuclear Monopoly weapons. Works. Right, Monopoly works for me too. Monopoly, oh, I like that. <laughs> Rock paper right? scissors. We'll all sit down and play a game of Monopoly. Exactly. Rock so, paper scissors so, takes over. <laughs> Rock paper scissors even works. <laughs> That's true. No casualties. Anyway, I don't want to get political. Show. I appreciate you taking the time, Chris. You have anything else? I don't, man. Thanks for joining us. That was a great interview. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris and Bruce. I appreciate it. And no I worries. Hope, uh, we get together soon for the next track. He was a great interview, actually. Yeah, I thought that was really good. Yeah, like he was a nice guy and kind of chilled out. Now it makes more sense because he's doing like a rock record. I was kind of curious, you know, like how it all put together. How, but how, I think how it, it all came out. Yeah, I think it fits. It was a nice interview. He didn't go with melons on the, <laughs> uh, which is what I would have gone with. It was the first one on my on my list, but ah. Actually, so he picked a number. So I've got these. I don't know if I told you, but I was out at the store one day and I found this like a uh, family feud edition of cards. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, you know, it gives you the top five. So on that, he picked pear, right? Oh, he picked peach, right? Yeah. Yeah. So pear was the number one. Melon is two. Apple. How would you describe your girlfriend as an apple? I don't know. I don't know. He picked peach. And then the last one is cherry. And I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't probably want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that I'm a little put off by nobody, by everyone taking the high road because I'm not a high road kind of guy. Well, you know we're going to get that one interview where they don't. It's coming. I hope so. It's coming. But everybody's like starting up the new year with like these great resolutions. I'm going to I'm gonna be an upstanding citizen and shit. That doesn't make good for radio. It makes for terrible podcasts, but hey. Yeah, we need... <laughs> Where's Riley? We need to get Riley back on. <laughs> Riley will take it down the dumper in a moment. <laughs> I'll tell you, if you were interviewing me, uh, I would be X-rated. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. But since I'm, but the, host, rate, since I'm the host, I'm not going to do that. Right. Not yet anyway. Not until uh, somebody opens the floodgate. Since I'm the co-host. Oh, yeah, that's right. Who the hell? You're not the host, bitch. <laughs> Well, anyway, that was a good one. Thank you for listening. Keep it metal. Keep it metal.